Welcome to Tea for Lunch, our weekly show powered by Arcade Studios. Each week, we'll serve you the top stories we're following in social media, entertainment, celebrity, and tech in 15 minutes or less. You can catch the show live on Instagram or TikTok every Thursday at around 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or on all podcast providers on and YouTube on Fridays this week. We're your hosts, Mitzi and... Mike. <laughs> and I'm just still recovering because we usually drink tea and I took a sip and it was just cold water. <laughs> I wasn't know, ready for that. If you know, you know, we don't really drink tea here, although our show is called Tea for Lunch. I was ready for a green tea or some like apple cinnamon situation. You know, I just didn't have the time to make the tea that we won't drink. All right. <laughs> I got the shivers now <laughs> instead of feeling warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> but. Apologies. The show continues. The show must go on. What's going on? Um, well, last night I spent a lot of time on TikTok watching Beyonce's Renaissance tour because it kicked off yesterday in Stockholm, and the Beehive does not play. Like the the show concert started, people were going live showing the concert, and then within like a few minutes, there was like clips of the concert going. So it's, it felt like I was watching it in real time. This is no Frank Ocean operation. There's lots of live streaming, lots of content. Honestly, the reference kind of offends me because she takes it so seriously. And like the theatrics, the like, yeah. the production of it all. There's like one port part in the show where she like pretends like she's holding the camera and it's like a fisheye lens and then it like goes around her from behind. Like it's so. It looks amazing, and I'm going to see her in September, and I can't wait. But you got, you just got a bunch of spoilers. I don't care. I feel like I'll still enjoy it. Like I know the entire set list. I know like how she split up the oh, no. the concert. It's three hours long. I know like her interludes. So I don't think I'll be disappointed. It's just how many times have you so been to a amazing. Beyonce concert? Uh, four. So this would be five. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, it worth back. it. <laughs> This is a renaissance for you. <laughs> it's a renaissance for me. It's a been, homecoming. It's been a lot of years since I've seen her, so... Yeah. yeah. So you guys have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Speaking of celebrities, uh, Adidas and Yeezy are back. Oh, we're going right into our first story. Here we That's go. That's not a story. Oh. This is just small talk. Oh. We got three crazy. other stories. Oh, my other gosh. Than this. Okay, yeah. Yeezy and... But yeah, after Yeezy. Adidas termi terminated their partnership with Ye a while ago... Um, for doing a lot of stupid things, like making anti-Semitic remarks and harassing employees, the brand has decided that it will continue to sell Adidas Easy products, which is honestly just like survival for them at this point, because I think it was about 1.3 billion USD dollars worth of Adidas Easy shoes that were just sitting in inventory, so. Yeah, like it's just kind of silly when people make such quick decisions around like canceling someone for really offensive remarks I think like I get why they did it but then just backpedaling is just kind of it just feels like it's virtue signaling to me when the t at the time that they did it yeah but, but I I understand like it is a business like the money doesn't lie so and it's also keep those shareholders you, happy totally and such a huge waste of product yeah, they said burning the product was definitely out of the question. They apparently considered donating all the sneakers, but felt that it would lead to them reaching the market in a volatile way. So uh, Kanye is still going to get his cut. I think it's about 15% of profits. Um, but the but Adidas has said that they're going to donate a portion of the proceeds to some organizations that represent people groups that he offended. Interesting. So they're doing something. Yeah, I mean, at least the money is going towards them, which is good. Yeah. I guess so. Not all the money. A piece of the a money. A portion of the money. We don't profits. know how much of the money. Yeah. But that's that. Yay's back. Adidas well, is back. Yeezy is back. Right. Right. Has he said anything about it? I haven't seen anything. It's just from Adidas so far. But he's probably stoked to get his 15%. Yeah. Not that he needs it. Dude's but... feeling broke. <laughs> okay. Um, also, how are you feeling? Heard you had a rough game last night. Yeah. So for those of you that watch the show, our whole... Most of our team at Arcade played dodgeball uh, in the winter, but this term, like in the summer, we're playing kickball, which is really fun. We had a blast last week, um, and then a few of us rolled up late this week, so we didn't have a time to stretch, and obviously, once you get post 30 years old, just th things just start to go downhill physically. I'm 33, so I rolled up late, 
just ran straight out onto the diamond, got into business, and after my first kick, running the first base, as I tried to stop on first base, just tweak something in the old quadriceps. <laughs> so I wasn't the only one, though. It, I think that it was like half a dozen of us. By the third or fourth inning, we were all nursing quad injuries and just like barely able to walk. Yeah, so, that's, that's something else. Risky business. And our first game, there was an actual like pretty bad injury from the opposing team, team yeah. which was really hard to watch and that was on my kick as well yes it was yeah. and it kind of freaks me out like if I have a leg in injury like I'm out like I can't I don't recover in a few days I'm like out for weeks yeah like that one time you stubbed your toe okay I broke <laughs> several toes in one foot at the Did same you? time you went to the doctor <laughs> no I didn't but like you can tell like you can tell what a broken toe looks like I, think I broke my like femur sure. last night broke you did not break your family you're fine I literally couldn't walk plus was caring for a newborn so that was actually a very serious injury and mm -hmm. like I said it took me out for weeks it did <laughs> serious if I fall at my age like it's it's a serious thing like you know how people sometimes <laughs> laugh when people fall like if someone like trips or something sometimes it's like funny when you see like video footage of people falling but if I see like an elderly person or honestly like someone like over 40 fall I feel like it hurts me inside you can feel it I can feel yeah. it that being said I, I stand some old people falling videos on TikTok mm -mm. for sure no I can't sorry it is what it is well should we get into the stories let's do it first up Google has launched blue check marks for verified brands in Gmail uh, we don't often have email news to share but this one could be a big one for brands Google is implementing its own blue check mark system with Gmail users now set to see blue ticks appearing next to approved brand profiles in their inbox. The new check marks are available to all Google Workplace customers, including personal Google accounts and legacy G Suite and business customers. It builds off their existing brand indicators for the message identification feature, and to get the blue tick, businesses have to adopt the brand verification process process which requires registration of your logo with a verified mark certificate so you've heard about check marks happening quite a bit there was a big conversation around meta and, and instagram instituting their check marks and then obviously on twitter you can purchase a check mark for verification and it looks like google's just kind of following the trend jumping on the bandwagon are are check marks like emojis where they're just like standardized across platforms because i feel like every and all of these platforms have the same sort of like cookie shaped blue check mark i don't think it's an emoji because the emoji no i mean just like oh. emojis in the sense that they're kind of standardized yeah someone decided that the check mark is the way to verify so but it's that same blue badge you know it's there's no like nuance between platforms yeah it's true Anyways. i wish it was a gold star to be honest I feel like uh, there's got to be some psychology around like the check mark and why it's the chosen symbol. Yeah, I feel like a gold star would have some sort of like Jewish connection, so maybe that, that's why they steer away from mm, it. But, true. Um, yeah, it's interesting. They're, it's mostly for organizations at this point, which when I first saw the news, I got excited because I hate cold emails from like random people and their SEO expertise and all this mm -hmm. different stuff. And I think since those are from individuals, that that's not going to get filtered out by this verification process yet. But still, it's good to know that um, when you get an email from an organization, especially if they're offering you something mm -hmm. um, or asking for something that's like um, privileged, you know that that you know that it's a real organization. Yeah, I wish I had this when I got an email from Reformation offering me like six hundred dollars worth of free product to like post on Instagram as long as I reply within two hours. <laughs> and I was they were like, oh my gosh, is this Reformation? But it yeah, wasn't. It was not clearly spam. Non verified. That's that. On okay, to the next one. Let's go. Okay, Blue Sky. I don't know much about Blue Sky, and I am still kind of a Twitter fan, but Blue Sky is becoming a hot commodity as demand for a Twitter alternative among some groups continues to grow. So uh, it, the thing about Blue Sky that's different than other alternatives like Mastodon is that it's backed by Jack Dorsey, who was previously the CEO of Twitter. Um, it's quickly growing in popularity. Recent reports suggest the app has topped 50,000 users, although even some other reports have stated that there's been nearly 400,000 worldwide downloads on iOS. As excitement climbs, so has the value of an invite to the invite only app, which honestly reminds me of Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Remember when you had had to get an invite to get on Clubhouse? I do remember that. 
The only thing is I feel like they're handing out invites differently. Like it sounds like they're fewer and far farther between and it's they're they're positioning it as less of a supply and demand tactic and more of a way to make sure that accounts that are joining the platform are trusted and like interact in like a healthy way in the so way that they want to create. There's a finite amount of invites. Yeah, and and I guess they're monitoring to see out of the invites that they give to existing users, which ones are more commonly inviting trusted users. So people that will like engage in a healthy and like positive way rather than like troll accounts and spam accounts and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I wonder if that could lead to more biases because that was like a big part of what drove Elon Musk to purchase Twitter in the first place was he felt that the way they were like um, limiting people or like limiting people's voices was biased yeah i don't it's possible but i think the the criteria is less about like what do you believe and what are you talking about and more about how are you talking and like are you legit or spam you know okay so that's my perception but we'll see what happens and some people despite that those criteria are still even going ahead and just selling invites on usd or on ebay for example anywhere between 120 dollars to 400 dollars usd for the access to the platform interesting so it's popping yeah why are people like buying it like what's so like cool about it because i think because it has this like chaotic early twitter energy that's what a lot of people are saying mm. about it there's lots of meme accounts on there there's lots of fun like dialogue there's just a, apparently from what the reports i've read there's good energy good vibes good vibes you want to be part of the first wave on something i want to like know that. who came up with the name blue sky they got to be a marketer yeah, and maybe it's trying to like connect to Twitter in the sense that like Twitter, the whole brand was like blue as well. Well, like blue sky indicates like blue sky thinking. It's like a kind of like a marketing right. term. Like let's have a blue sky meeting. <laughs> yeah, but the Twitter icon was also blue, and it was a bird which flies oh, in the it's sky. Oh, a bird. Twitter. Oh right. Right. So I think there's <laughs> connections to both. Right, there's du a duality of meaning. We're right. both right. Birds fly in the sky. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, they do. Okay, final story here. Amid a series of strikes, the Writers Guild of America called a strike after midnight on May 2nd. And then 12 hours later, picket lines popped off in L.A. and New York outside studios, networks, and streamer headquarters. Um, and, of course, nobody strikes like writers. And there are amazing, hilarious strike posters popping up on the Internet. And I'm just going to read a few. One said, I stream, you stream, we all stream, so pay us. <laughs> you are not entertained, pay writers. Are you not entertained, pay writers? Wrote ChatGPT this. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm not delivering that correctly. You like read the first one wrong and then the GPT one was actually wrong. And that's the part that makes it funny. Uh, pay your writers or we'll spoil succession. That one really convinced me. Yeah, that me. one's stressing me out. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. AI came up with 10 suggestions for the, this sign. They all sucked. Shots Good. fired at AI. AI. Dang. <laughs> Dang. So people are calling it the Netflix strike because of the ways that these streaming services have fundamentally changed the industry. And basically writers, writers are asking to be compensated differently given that streaming kind of helps make some of the shows that they write more successful and more profitable so it's 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 dark times it is i it, think we all want to be paid more out here but i'm not writing a netflix show so yeah i mean so shows that have been paused because of the strike include just about every late night show saturday night live stranger things hacks yellow jackets and more and also the mtv awards which drew barrymore who was supposed to be the host she stepped down in solidarity with the writers. So, Good job, Drew. Yeah, it's really interesting, and I don't know if you remember, but there was a writer's strike like quite a few years ago, and it like lasted a long time. So if this lasts a long time, it could mean that some of our favorite shows will be impacted. Yeah, Succession really hit home for me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think that one's like done and dusted, but yeah, could be impacted next seasons. I did read an article that. Uh, House of Dragon should not be impacted because that show has been written and revisions are done. They're just mm. filming. So, good news for us. Schedule. Even though we have to wait two years for that show anyways for production. So, um, But yeah, I was really concerned because some of my favorite shows have incredible writing. 
So. <laughs> like what? For example. Succession, White Love Lotus. Is blind, <laughs> no, that Real is, Housewives. That is the Kardashian, benefit of oh. being a reality um, show fan because it won't be impacted by so the writers' Those things write themselves. Awards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but I mean, <laughs> for you, I was thinking about the shows that you know you watch and you have maybe a bit less to worry about because oh hbo won't be affected <laughs> no the quality of the sh of the writing i know what just just <laughs> hit me with the punchline here you're coming for me just get it over with i was gonna say that like some of the shows that you watch maybe don't have the same level of writing and which show <laughs> suits <laughs> right but yeah. you know yeah, I watch that in the background sometimes. Totally, yeah. When I'm doing other things. And it's also canceled, so. Yeah. Anyway. Because it was terribly written. <laughs> it was terribly written. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that is something we'll be keep, keep watching on, and hopefully they can get things resolved. I really hope so. I really hope so, too. Especially, like, I saw, I, we didn't include this in the notes, but there was one of the signs that said something about how if you don't pay writers, then who will write Tanya's revenge story? White Lotus. Yeah. We True. gotta know. We, we gotta, gotta know, know what's happening next in White Lotus. Is Mike Snow... He wrote that one, right? I don't remember. Did you know... So, I'm pretty sure he did. He's the creator of The White Lotus, and he was also wrote School of Rock. Congratulations, and Mike. And he was... Yeah, he was Ned Schneebly in that movie. <laughs> Do you remember? Such a nice. good movie. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I think uh, we, we all want to see White Lotus go to Thailand, so let's just get these writers paid. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, well, that's the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Now that we've wet your palate, go eat something more substantial. Cheers. I almost forgot what that end <laughs> piece of coffee was. I know, I was wondering if you were going to say Now it. that we've fed you some lunch, <laughs> what was it again? Now that we've wet your palate.